Hi students, welcome to Year 12 Chemistry and the Equilibrium and Acid Reactions Module 5. This is video number 12. And we're going to be looking at the equilibrium constant in a more applied sense this time as we do some calculations. Obviously, it's important to practice uh, any mathematical skill as often as you can until you get it set in your mind of, of what you need to do and how you need to work through the steps uh, in order to solve problems. So here's an example of an equilibrium system uh, where we have hydrogen sulfide and sulfur dioxide, and they're in equilibrium with sulfur and water gas. And there's a couple of important things that we need to be aware of here. First of all, the uh, sulfur is a solid form of sulfur, so that's not going to actually be part of our calculation of the equilibrium constant, which is good. But we also have a number of uh, pieces of information here that we need to be aware of. So uh, what we want to do is, first of all, have uh, a the equation written again. This time I'm mainly writing it because I'm interested in the mole ratios. So that's going to be fairly important, H2O. What we use uh, when we're looking at calculating the equilibrium constant is we're looking at a, um, a method that's often referred to as the ICE method. And ICE stands for initial change and equilibrium. And this is quite a useful method to use when you are trying to calculate the values of an equilibrium constant and hence you need to know the concentrations of different substances at equilibrium. So let's look at the information that we're given. We're told that one mole of hydrogen sulfide and one mole of sulfur dioxide react in a one litre vessel. So we're given the temperature here, which is important because we know that the equilibrium constant is temperature dependent, but it's not going to be part of our calculation here. Um, so what we want to do is, first of all, we want to look at our mole ratio. So our mole ratio here is 2 to 1 to 3 to 2. So that's just taking the coefficients out in front of each of those. The next thing we want to do is we want to find the initial number of moles. So the initial number of moles is uh, 1 and 1. Now, what we're told is that we produce half a mole of water vapour under equilibrium conditions. So therefore, the number of moles, uh, I'll put the number of moles C and the number of moles E. One thing we do know is the number of moles uh, at equilibrium for water is 0 0.5. Now initially our assumption is that we have uh, no product, that's what it suggests to us from the way the question is worded, and therefore the change must have been, and I'm going to put this in um, a, the green colour so we can bring these down, is 0 0.5. We have to add these together in order to find the number at equilibrium. Now we need our ratios. So 0.5, we want, what we want to do is divide that by 2 and multiply that by 3, which gives us 0 0.75 is the number of moles of uh, sulfur, so uh, 0 0.75. Now we need to continue to carry these ratios through, so that means we're going to have um, 0 0.25 is the change and because the reactants have been reacting they're actually going to decrease by that amount and then we have a 2 and a 2 here so there will be a 0 0.5 here again we subtract these we get 0 0.5 and 0 0.75 so there's our numbers in order to calculate the equilibrium constant, we need the concentration at equilibrium, and that means we also need the, the volume at equilibrium. And we're told it's a one litre vessel, that's not going to change. So we can change back and have one, 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 one. And therefore, dividing each of these by one, we're going to have 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 0 0.75, and 0 0.5. These are our concentrations in moles per litre uh, at equilibrium. So now we need to get some pork. The pork is product over reactants equals K. So we need some ice and we need some pork in order to solve these problems. 
So therefore our equilibrium expression is going to be the concentration of the products, which is the H2O. Remember, I was not going to multiply it by the sulfur because the sulfur is a solid. So that's just a constant. And I'm going to divide that. Uh, I'm going to raise the power of the uh, water uh, to the power of 2. And then I'm going to divide that by H2S. And that's also going to be raised to the power of 2 and multiplied by SO2. So therefore, I then substitute my values in. Water is 0 0.5 squared. And I'm going to divide that by the H2S is 0 0.5 squared uh, multiplied by 0 0.75. And so what I'm going to end up is 1.33. That's my value of the equilibrium constant. Just quickly, there's a couple of important things that we need to be aware of in terms of the equilibrium constant. One thing that's, that's I guess, quite critically important here is that um, different equilibrium constants are going to have different units, and that's partly because of the indices, what we're raising each of these uh, concentrations to a particular power of. But the magnitude still provides us a little bit of qualitative information. When the value of the equilibrium constant, KEQ, is large, then we have a uh, large uh, concentration uh, or proportion of products. Products are on the top, so therefore if the numerator is large, the whole function will be large, and so therefore we have lots of products. When the equilibrium constant is close to one, then we have a roughly equal concentrations of reactants and products. And of course, when K is small, we're going to have a much larger concentration uh, or proportion of reactants. So we also can talk about the fact that the equilibrium for particular types of reactions might lie to the right if it favours the products uh, or to the left if it favours the reactants. Very important that you get some practice working through some of these questions. So I'm sure you'll be doing that in class. And thanks for watching.